Hi students, it's Shayna, your teacher from EspressoEnglish.net and I just wanted to get on live really quickly to do two things. One is to invite you to our next live class. It will be on Saturday, this Saturday, October 21st at 11 o'clock in the morning, New York time. So make sure to convert that to your own time zone. And this live class is going to be, well, it will be on YouTube, but the chat, the chat will be over at EspressoEnglish.net slash live. I know there was a little bit of confusion about that last time, and I am sorry for the miscommunication, but uh, I will be streaming on YouTube, and if you would like to participate in the chat, then come on over to EspressoEnglish.net slash live. The link will be in the video description for this video. Actually, if you go there now, you can uh, click a link there, which will show you what time the live class is in your own time zone. So I recommend clicking over to the page now, checking the time and marking it on your calendar so that you can attend live. And you can also watch the replay of last week's live class, which was focused on grammar. I know a lot of you participated and it was really fun to answer your grammar questions. Uh, you asked a lot of really great questions and I hope that my answers were helpful. The theme for this week's live class is going to be confusing words. So as you know, the live classes are Q&A, question and answer. So that means I need questions from you. So if you have some words that uh, confuse you in English, please type them in either the chat or if you're watching this later in the comments to this video. And uh, I will make a list. Oh, the chat's not even on. Okay, I've just enabled the chat. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm still learning how to do these live broadcasts. Okay, so type your confusing words in the chat or um, you can just come back and leave a comment on this video later. The other thing that I wanted to do today is answer a question that I got from a student, which I didn't have a chance to answer last week, but I thought it was a really good question. And that is about the difference between the expressions in mind and on my mind. There are two expressions that seem really similar. Maybe you think they're the same, but we actually use them in slightly different situations. In mind, we can use for general thoughts and ideas. So, um, oh, hello, I see some folks in the chat, great. Uh, general thoughts and ideas. So for example, let's say I'm going to renovate my house and uh, that means I'm going to change the structure and the design and the decoration of my house. And I can say, okay, I have a few things in mind for the kitchen. I want the refrigerator to be over here and I want to change the color of the sink. These are ideas that I have uh, in my head. So I can say I have a few things in mind to refer to my general thoughts and ideas. Another phrase you can use is one thing I have in mind is to express one of your ideas. So, um, with the house renovation example, I can say one thing I have in mind is to paint the kitchen uh, blue, for example, to express just one idea. So use in mind without the preposit or without the possessive. So we don't usually say in my mind, we just say in mind, and it's understood that you're talking about your own thoughts and ideas because you know your own thoughts and ideas. So use in mind for general thoughts and ideas. One question you can ask uh, someone else is, what do you have in mind? And we usually use this question when there's already a context of talking about a particular topic or area and the other person has uh, implied or suggested that they might have some ideas in this area. So if your coworker is in charge of organizing the office Christmas party this year, and he tells you that, he says, oh, this year I have to organize the office Christmas party, you might ask him, oh, what do you have in mind? Meaning, what are your ideas for this 
party or if uh, another friend is writing a book and she's finished with the book she just needs to design the cover for it uh, and you're talking about this book and about the cover you might ask her what do you have in mind for the cover okay you're asking her what her ideas are for the book cover all right so in mind is for general thoughts and ideas on my mind is a little bit different Sometimes we can use it for general thoughts and ideas, but it's more common to use on my mind for things that we are thinking about a lot or things that we are worried about. We are concerned for some reason. So if I have a cousin who's gotten into a car accident and she's in the hospital recovering, I can say, my cousin has been on my mind lately because I'm thinking about her and I'm worried about her. I, I want her to recover quickly, okay? Or, um, so that would be an example of on my mind, meaning something that is uh, worrying me, something that I'm worried about, but not necessarily. You can use on my mind for things that you're just giving a lot of thought to. So let's say I'm thinking about buying a car, and so I've been doing a lot of research and comparing different models, and I've been asking my friends about their own cars and if they like them and so on, and I can say, I'm thinking about buying a car, so cars have been on my mind lately. It just means that this is a topic that is prominent in my thoughts because I've been giving it a lot of thought. I'm not necessarily worried in this example, uh, but I'm just thinking a lot about cars. Cars are on my mind. All right, uh, another uh, way you can use on someone's mind is as a question, if you see someone who looks like they are deep in thought, so they're really, they really look like they're concentrating or like they are, sometimes we use the expression lost in thought, they're really thinking hard, or if they look worried, you can ask that person, hey, what's on your mind? You are inviting the other person to share what they are thinking deeply about or what they are worried about. And sometimes the other person will open up and share, and other times they might say, oh, I'd rather not talk about it. And that means you should respect them, uh, their desire not to share and maybe uh, change the topic or just leave them alone. So what's on your mind? You can ask that to someone who, uh, who looks like they're deep in thought or worried about something. All right, so if you'd like to try and use these, both these expressions in the chat or in the comments, it's great to use the phrases in order to practice them and remember them better. Just to review, in mind is used for general thoughts and especially ideas. And on my mind is used for things you are thinking about a lot, things that are prominent in your thoughts and things that you are worried about. Got it? I hope that you will join me for the next live class, which will be Saturday, October 21st, 11 o'clock in the morning, New York time. And again, the chat will be over at espressoenglish.net slash live. Uh, if you go there, you will see, if you go there right now, you will see the recording from last week and there's also a, a timer that shows how much time is left until the next class. And I hope that you come over to espressoenglish.net slash live and join in the chat on Saturday because in the chat, you can ask me questions, you can interact with other students, and also it's a chance for you to practice. So sometimes when I'm giving the lesson, I'll ask you to put it into practice in the chat, and I like to read out the student answers uh, to get a lot of good examples and also sometimes make corrections. So please mark it on your calendar. I hope that today's tip and lesson has been useful and I would love to see you on Saturday. Bye for now.